we now, through the diagnostic approaches that we have now, we can identify the lineage affiliation of all cases. Years ago, and the younger people listening uh, will not even recall that in the old days, there was a subgroup of ALL that was called NAL, NAL ALL. And NAL because we didn't know the lineage affiliation of those cases. So now this is no longer, it doesn't exist in a book or a chapter. You will never find this definition any longer. Uh, we identify cases uh, that are now treated differently. One example is a Burkitt leukemia. In the old days, from the FAP classification with the L3, these patients in the old days did very poorly. Now they do better. Uh, and we know that they are mature cells, and the diagnostic workup has shown us that they express immunoglobulins, and these are cells that respond uh, to uh, anti CD20 treatment. So rituximab is, is incorporated because they are relatively mature cells and express CD20. So that is an example of how through diagnosis we are refining treatment. Then we've learned to identify through the, the diagnostic workup subgroups, which are very important. Typical example is a Philadelphia positive LL, particularly in adults, which has changed completely with the tyrosine kinase inhibitors. But there are others, the 411 translocation and the Philadelphia like, so the different subgroups. Targeted treatment has become an absolute reality in ALL. And again, the Philadelphia positive ALL is an example. So we have to, in the diagnostic work, work up, identify these cases very early. In our studies, this is done within one week from diagnosis. And that is a week when we give the steroid preface. So we have time to do it because uh, molecular testing for the BCR Abelson is quick and easy, so that can be done if you have the available laboratory, obviously. And uh, I gave an example of the Berkey leukemia. That's another form of targeted treatment that comes from an adequate diagnostic workup. Um, and then I will discuss MRD because if we want to utilize MRD to monitor each patient, we have to have the good the profile of that given patient at diagnosis. Now, MRD monitoring ALL can be done by flow or by PCR. Uh, I'll say up front that we prefer PCR because we consider it more uh, precise and more sensitive, but many centers do flow. In any case, you need the diagnostic uh, picture of every patient. So if it's by flow, you need to gate every patient with a good combination of antigens, or therefore antibodies, to actually monitor that given patient. They're all different. If you're doing molecular, you need the material to, to, to monitor the patient. In some cases, you have to do a probe. For instance, for the immunoglobulin T receptor, you have to design a probe based on a on a each individual patient. So that all in that diagnostic workup of these patients. Uh, and that allows, obviously, uh, has allowed and enables today targeted personal management based on MRD. And then now, which I will not talk about, but in the workshop, certainly in the workshop in the Congress, talk about monoclonal antibodies. Uh, I will mention in my talk, blinatumab, but others will talk about that. Uh, other monoclonal antibodies, you know, TUDSA will be discussed. CAR T cells will be discussed, but CAR T obviously have opened a new window of opportunity in ALL. So these are immunotherapeutic strategies that have become, have become and are becoming a reality in ALL. But to do that, we have to, for instance, if we do doing a if we plan to use antibodies, we have to know that the given patient or the leukemic cells express that given antigen, whether it's a CD19 or whether it's a C22. So again, it's a diagnostic workup on the samples. So I'll discuss all these uh, points and I will say that we need a broad, uh, for a correct uh, diagnostic and prognostic certification, we need a broad characterization and diagnosis. This is certainly very important to, for all we said. And we have to diagnose correctly in ALL. We have to diagnose which type of ALL it is. Uh, and MRD, as I mentioned, so this requires many aspects. And in fact, the laboratory, I put down a slide that you still have morphology, which is still useful today. Immunophenotype, cytogenetics, molecular biology, immunoglobulin T cell receptor gene arrangements when MRD is incorporated. And uh, this is obviously important, the same for flow, as I mentioned. 
And you can have other technologies too. I would mention also that you can use technologies to identify further genetic abnormalities with the copy number of relations, SNP analysis. In the past, whole exome sequences have been done to identify some subgroups. And I'll probably give some suggestion of that during the talk. And uh, not only that, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about MRD and I'll also say how MRD is changing because uh, probably quantum PCI is even not enough because we have some cases that are borderline and we need to refine it. So we're using digital dropper PCI and <coughs> next generation sequencing. So I'll discuss all these various points in my talk and uh, showing how this workup by diagnosis is key for an optimal management of patients. I'll also, because the world is very vast and realities are different, I'll show a slide of let's say the minimal requirement for immuno, an immunophenotypic characterization at diagnosis and how this should be done and should be done everywhere. I'll give some examples of uh, how these markers can be monitored during the course of the disease. For example, I mean, we know that if uh, in the Philadelphia post, the patient should do a TKI, if you have a, an ABL mutation, some of these mutations are detrimental and I'll show you that you can do this even on MRD cells. So these are technologies that the lab can do and that can impact and personalize management. And then I will show how diagnostic work can be even more sophisticated and can pick up some abnormalities that so far or in the past we did not know and how this can impact the prognosis. I'll give you one example, I think, in the Philadelphia Bosdale LL because uh, we know a lot about Icarus, but Icarus alone may not impact on prognosis. But if you have Icarus plus additional genetic abnormality, this has often a very poor prognostic uh, implication. Uh, and I'll talk about the Philadelphia like and the MRD, obviously. And I'll conclude saying that uh, the manual today is always more, what can I say, technology or bio biologically driven. And this requires obviously a, a major role of the laboratories. And uh, this is obviously very important. If we really want to impact on prognosis, we need laboratories available. We need laboratories that can do all the diagnostic tests that we now briefly summarize, but I will discuss. And uh, this should be done at all ages and they should be in place. And you know, it would be very important to have standardized technologies. I'll give you one example. Blina tumors have been approved. In fact, it's the only drug approved for the treatment of minimal residual disease. So this means that the MRD should be done in, in, let's say, optimal way, because it should be done with standardized technologies in certified laboratories, because we're deciding whether to treat or not MRD, maybe whether to transplant the patient or not. And I will finish by saying that networks in this respect are key points because not every center can do everything. This is unrealistic and probably even wrong conceptually. So networks are very important. Uh, and in many countries, there are corporate study groups. Uh, I'll give an example of Italy because I live here, but it's the same in other countries. We have a network for childhood uh, leukemias and one for adults, which operate in the same way. And uh, many tests are done centrally, not in a single. So for our, just to give you one example, in, in our ALL, adult ALL protocol, samples are sent to Rome and they're tested at diagnosis and they're tested for MRD. And uh, most is done in one lab, some are done in two or three labs in the country, using always the same technology in order to guarantee the reproducibility of the results. This is a key point. So obviously I know very well that this is not widely available, not doable everywhere. And this is one of the key problems that we have in the management of patients in general. And um, we can only hope that through networks, this can improve in, uh, in uh, as much as possible. The realities are clearly very different in different regions, in different countries, which means more limited accessibilities, not only to drugs, but also to technologies that we are discussing. So well, there has been a workshop. I hope that there'll be discussion and points will come from people from different parts of the world. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.